I'd love to hear about it. But first, I'm going to share the stories of a few folks here who were kind enough to tell us what's going on in their galaxy. Let's dig in. First up, Da plus three. I caught my wife on her birthday. Tuesday was my wife's birthday. I took off early and picked up flowers for her so I could surprise her. But, boy, did she have a surprise for me when I walked in the front door? There were clothes scattered from the front door all the way to our bedroom. At first, I couldn't understand what I was looking at. Then I realized it was men's and women's clothes. Apparently, I got home right after they got through having a little fun, and they were in the shower. I can hear them laughing and giggling about how great it was. I was so freaking numb at that point. I took a step back and went into the living room and sat on the edge of the couch for a couple minutes my mind was just racing. Then I saw all his stuff lying on the floor. I picked up all of his clothes, took him out to the driveway to dump charcoal starter fluid on them, and set fire to his stuff. The only thing I did not burn were his keys and his phone. When I walked back in the house, my wife was standing there in a towel, just staring at me with a stupid look on her face. I told her happy birthday. She just started crying. He comes walking out with a freaking towel wrapped around him. I told him to get the hell out of my house before I beat him up because at this point, I'm just about to lose it. And he starts looking for his clothes. I told him that they were in the driveway. He goes to the door and sees his clothes burning and screams. What did you do? I handed him his keys and his phone and told him to get out of my house and to give me my towel back. My wife starts yelling at me, telling me that I can't do that to him. I can't humiliate him like that. I look at her and tell her you didn't have a problem humiliating me my wife looks at him and tells him that she will get him a pair of sweats. I told her, if he touches any of my stuff, I will beat him up and she said, you can't do that. You can't send him out there like that. I said, stop trying to protect him. What about protecting me? She just gets this blank look on her face like she didn't understand. The guy starts walking towards me saying he wants a pair of pants, at least. I told him, no. Get out. That's when they tried to grab my arm, so we got to take home a black eye along with no pants, but a freaking disaster just because I wanted to surprise my wife on her birthday. I'm so numb right now. I don't know what to do. I guess this is an update. A little bit more about us. I'm 36. She's 38. We have a 16-year-old daughter. I kicked my wife out on her birthday. She's living with her mom who is also a cheater. I've not spoken to her since Tuesday. She's been blowing up mine and our daughter's phones. I had to explain to my daughter what her mother did. Not in details. But just that she cheated, she is so heartbroken and angry. I retained a lawyer this morning. I finally texted my wife and told her I retained a lawyer. And I will meet her later on today so she can try to explain herself. This is probably a bad idea, but I need answers. Is there a standard list of questions that I should ask? Because right now, I can't think clearly. Whenever I found them, they were in the shower. It was all steamed up so they didn't know I was standing at the doorway, and I could hear them laughing and giggling. I texted her and told her I did not want to meet up today. I just can't stand to look at her yet. She started blowing up my phone with phone calls and texts, swearing that she can change, saying that she's already gotten rid of him, whoever he was. I did tell her not to delete a damn thing from her phone. I want to see all of her texting with this guy. Okay. First, be prepared for the lying. Gaslighting, blame shifting, rug sweeping, projection, crying, putting the burden on you to fix the relationship, etc. Look at the 180 approach, which is meant to address ways to cope. As for what to do first, and I know this is harsh, but if you have kids, get your DNA tested. Also, get STD tested for you. Second, talk to a divorce attorney. You don't need to file a divorce, but you should know your options. She cheated and divorce is a possible outcome of this. Find out if divorce is a better option. Third, think about what you want now and in the future. Your marriage vows are broken, so you are no longer on 
or bound to keep your vows. If you wish to forgive her, then be prepared to honor your vows again until then, they are broken. Fourth, start hitting the gym and refocus on yourself. You may be back in the singles market and you want to be the best version of you if that happens. Fifth, if she is seriously willing to do anything, get a post note. Let's see if she is truly willing to do anything. Sixth, get the hell out of there and talk to friends and family. I know you don't want to avoid embarrassing your wife, but let's be frank. She embarrassed herself. Don't take this one moment of honesty to paint her with the color of being an honest person. Seventh, make sure you record all your conversations. She will claim physical and mental abuse. While I enjoyed reading what you did with the pee stuff, it doesn't help your case. Eighth, read, leave a cheater, get a life. If you're gonna afford it, also look to individual counseling. If you wanna say the relationship, worry about marriage counseling after individual counseling. Ninth, don't play the pick me dance. Also, be careful with hysterical bonding. Tenth, you will want to know the truth. Make her write everything down. The entire affair, but, no, you will never get the truth. To every question, her answer will be, I don't know, and other lies. Eleventh, put a hold on some of your bank accounts and credit cards. Cheaters sometimes pull out money getting ready for exit plans. Best of luck to you. All right, next up. Husband cheating for five years with the same woman while getting married and having a plan to child with me. It has been a week since I, 29 female, found out my husband, 30 male, has been cheating on me again. I'll give it a little background. My husband and I were together for four years before he proposed. There was another four years before we got married, then another four years before we had our baby. We had been together almost 13 years. We found out my husband had depression in the beginning of our relationship. He would always have to be stoned. This was his way of coping with it. We were teenagers still, and I didn't see it as an issue then. We were living together. And after being together for a year, there were some red flags like him lying about random stuff, taking rent money for weed, and just being distant. He lost his job eventually, and he shut down. My dad, his grandma, and I were the ones coming up with rent money. He never tried to get a job, and that's when he stole the rent money. All in all, we lost our apartment and had to move in with my dad in another town. So three years into our relationship, we were trying to get back on our feet while living with dad. I stopped smoking because I wanted a better job to support us. This is when we grew apart. At the time, I didn't know that I felt like our trust was broken. I just wanted to make him happy and take care of things. I learned later that he felt like I abandoned him then. He wanted me to smoke with him still, but I didn't want to anymore because I didn't like it. He went to community college and worked part-time. That's where he met the other woman. I worked and paid for almost everything. He proposed in 2012 before he met her. But we had a long engagement, and we never worked on our issues. After seven years together, we set the date in 2015 to be married in 2016. Two months after setting the date, he took his emotional affair to a physical one. I didn't know this, but she smoked with him after work and school. That's how they got close. Fast forward to two years after we are married, that's three years into the affair. My husband is even more depressed. He was talking more and more about suicide. I thought it was about him failing classes and him not being where he to be in life. I reassured him things will work out. We are still living with my dad. I have worked my way up to management. My husband is still at his crappy job making no money in failing school. The affair was affecting his choices. For example, he took all of our tax returns and spent it on a car he couldn't afford. It was the same type of car the other woman had. They would mostly smoke and take day trips to places too. Most of these trips took place when he should have been in school, so he was failing because of her. Over time, the other woman was demanding more from him. He tried to break up with her multiple times, but he always came running back. 
I found out about the affair because he gave me a pill saying it was a prenatal vitamin. At the time, I wanted to start a family so badly, and he used that excuse to give me an antibiotic for any STDs. He slipped up one time with the other woman and didn't use protection. So he gave me the pill just in case. I googled the pill and confronted him. He finally told me everything. I was devastated, but I wanted to save our marriage. We are Christians, and I believe we are bonded together. Beyond that, I love him with all my soul. So he ended things with her that night in 2018. All of 2019, we worked on our marriage. He didn't go back to her yet. It was the worst year of our lives. He went to therapy for about five months to figure out why he did what he did. Ultimately, it had to do with him being abused at four years old. Shortly after the abuse started, he was taken from his mom and sent to foster care. He says that the abuse changed his mind to think more about sexual things, and the separation broke him. He compartmentalized his feelings after that. He never felt loved and didn't really feel it for others. He was always ready to break bonds with people. He had a lot of sex partners at an early age, he never broke up with anyone. He would just cheat and people would leave him. That's why he didn't expect me to stay. He says he loves me more than he has loved anyone. It's hard though because he describes love like he doesn't know what it is. We think he might be a psychopath. However, he does feel guilt and empathy. It's just like he is another person when he cheated. He tells me. He splits himself into two people. He said he broke himself. That he felt distant from God, but with me, he felt like he was doing the right thing. We know he uses weed to escape reality and the affairs like that in a way. He said it never felt real. There were a lot of fights still about me not trusting him yet. He would get suicidal often because he said I would never be the same person. He said I died the day I found out. I feel like I did too. I couldn't remember who I was before. I feel like I have PTSD from it all. We still tried to get things better. That summer, we joined the church and got baptized. I felt better like we were recommitting to the marriage. In January of 2020, he said, let's try for a baby. I really thought he was better than him suggesting it at all said a lot about how far we have come. So we did. And I got pregnant immediately. Little did I know that he started pursuing the other woman again that same month he told her I was pregnant immediately, and she was pissed. That slowed their relationship down a little bit. A few months into the affair, it got physical again. After our baby was born, my husband was with me all the time. After two weeks, he went back to work with an extra day off for family bonding. Soon, he started working on his extra day off. More and more. He wouldn't actually work. He would see her. I found out a week ago because I looked at his credit card and so that he was in another town when he should have been at work. I called his work, and they said he wasn't there all day. So I called him over and over. When he answered, he wouldn't tell me where he was. And that night, I confronted him. He was adamant about not telling me. He said everything's okay and not to worry. That was his way of telling me that he was going to end it and to pretend it never happened. I finally got most of the details of the affair that night. He was mad that I called his work and snooped through his finances. He was over it all. He said he can't go through another year of hell and that I won't change. He was ready to leave because he had no hope that we could recover. I still wanted to try because we had our baby now, and I wasn't ready to let the other woman win. Also, he wasn't really trying to leave me for her in that moment. More like leave this earth forever. He didn't break it off with her that night, because she knew I found out and blocked his number right in front of him. She told him that she's going to enjoy the holidays with her family, and she can't do that crying and be depressed. So he said wait until January to deal with everything. I gave it a day, and I was just getting angrier. I felt like he was still deciding on who to choose. I asked him more about it all. He explained that he wished he could have both of us because he feels more stable. He said there's a side of him that has bad thoughts. That without her, he might do something worse like pick up random girls and bars or dating apps. He says with things the way they are, 
his thoughts are content. He told me honestly, he can't trust himself. He has never admitted to anyone about his perversion. So now I know the whole truth. I said he needs to get help with all of his issues if he wants us to be a family. He doubts it will work, but he's willing to go in. January. I gave. It another day. I got tired of his defeated answers. I said I wanted a separation that he can work on himself, and I could use the space to clear my head I'm a very emotional person, but I tucked my emotions away to have a logical conversation about our family. I said we can co-parent he's free to try things out with the other woman, but that would probably end any sort of reconciliation for us. That if he's with her, he can't bring the baby over to her house yet, and I wouldn't keep him from the baby. He was tearful, but really thinking about the options. The only point he started to downright refuse the separation was when he started to think of me with other people. He sort of sounded like confused I wasn't going to wait for him to come back. He thought the separation meant divorce wasn't an option. That I was always his wife while he figured things out. He said he only wanted children with me that I was his dream girl. I explained I wouldn't be the other woman, and our child isn't going to be subjected to witness this dysfunctional destructive relationship. I said pack your things. He still had to leave even if he wasn't going to be with her. He was distraught. He started to pack, but started to say he's going to make it right. He asked if I wanted to find a body or not. When he gets like that, it's hard to talk him down. I've had to stay up all night and block the door so he didn't kill himself. I have found him hanging in our closet before too. I know he's serious, so at this point, I told him crying, saying stay, and we will work on things. After all this, he has been an amazing husband and father. He's a 100% on board with going to therapy and being an open book. I can tell he sees me in a different light. He told me he was scared of losing me that there's a spark every time we kiss and touch. I think he finally got that I know my own worth and I'm a mother that will put our child first no matter what. I'm not going to stand for this treatment anymore. So here I am, waiting for December to end because it feels like we can't move forward until he breaks it off with the other woman. We can't talk about things because he can't handle it. He says let's have a good Christmas and New Year's for our family. I feel dead inside. The love I have for him feels numb or blocked. Like, I can't deal with any feelings until this affair is over. Only anger seeps out. I find myself ignoring him. I feel exhausted being around him, especially because he won't give me access to his phone records or bank statements. Not until January. I still think he's waiting to see if I get better. Like, he wants me to. Show him I can get over it and love him like I did before. I honestly don't know how I feel about him, but it might be because I can't express my feelings and begin healing from this. I do know that I put my faith in the Lord. That this is shaping who we are as people, that maybe this is the only way to save my husband from his destructive behavior because I doubt the other woman would help him get the help he needs. I also think our baby was always going to exist. So us having the baby then splitting up could also have been his with a capital H will for us. I want to truly forgive him. I don't like the person I'm becoming. I'm angry, jealous, and have a hardened heart. So I need to move forward before I lose my mind to this void. I ultimately don't want my baby to grow up in a broken home, but I will do what I must. I also don't want my husband to die. He told me even if he went with her, he would inevitably kill himself because of what he has done to his family. That he would be living a lie. He says we are his dream that his true self only wants us. And lastly, a quick one about a girlfriend cheated on me after I took her in. I'm a 19-year old male and she is a 19-year-old female. We have been dating for two years until about in April. Her and her dad got into a physical fight, and she asked to move in with me. I'm living with my parents, and my room was nowhere near big enough for her and her stuff. But I told her, yes, because I couldn't turn my back to the love of my life, it's a backstory. We started dating our sophomore year. I was depressed and a disaster because of multiple bullying and harassment incidents during the fall. We had been friends for over 
a year, and she knew what was going on and helped me through it. Before I knew it, I became madly in love with her, and everything was amazing. But for now, looking back, she was very controlling. I had to text her every 10 minutes. We would hang out every day. Once, I tried sending her home early, and she threatened suicide. Yes, seriously. I want to say all the red flags, but I have to be brief. Some issues at my home rise up. Mom is a hoarder, so I am bunny heads with her and my dad, since I want them to start clearing their stuff. The clutter was so bad that I just ended up withdrawing from college for the fall just because I couldn't focus on school. Sadly, my girlfriend was having a hard time as well. I tried everything I could for her, for things to be somewhat normal. My family loved her, spider flaws, she was one of us. At the time, I didn't know if I'd go back to school next semester or save up for next year since. My parents threatened not to pay so much. I stopped speaking to them for about three weeks. During this period, crap hits the fan. I found out my girlfriend is sexting a coworker. She works there at Chipotle. He joined the Marines and got shipped off two weeks ago. I found out on 1027. About two weeks after we celebrated our birthdays with dinners, and this guy was there. She threatened suicide after I told her. I needed to stay at a friend's house. She threatened to cut herself with a box cutters. No, I'm not ducking kidding. I told myself, we can work through this. Things just aren't normal right now, but it'll take a little bit before things normalize with my parents. She tells me about two weeks later that she can't take it anymore, and we'll be going back home for a couple days. A couple days turns into weeks. And during that time, I still had all her belongings in my room. I thought she just needed to alone time to sort herself out instead. She took this time to cheat with the guy instead of shipping out. I thought she just needed alone time to sort herself out. Instead, she took this time to cheat with the guy shipping out. She threw away our relationship and destroyed my soul. Since then, I've been a disaster. But my friends are all helping me out a lot. I have reoccurring nightmares. And with how controlling she was, I feel like my life is directionless now. We spoke about having kids. I was almost married in October when I tried to join the army. Why did she just throw away my love? She was crazy at times, but I thought she loved me, and I loved her. Now that's gone. And with the pandemic, I just feel disgusting. 